Today I'm in the west country of England, I'm in Wales in Somerset with a group called the Southern Detectorists. I've caught up with a guy called Dan Stevenson who had an amazing find yesterday. Dan, tell me a bit about it. So, set off into the fields as normal, um, picking up the usual finds on the way, walked into one field, third signal and yeah, eventually I've come down to Horton, it was within the first hour. Really? So you're using the XP, well done. Yeah, yeah, and your new, uh, new program as well, which was all good. Oh, the Sifted program. Yeah, first Brilliant. proper day out with it. So, when you got the signal, obviously you dug down. Yeah. Um, did you go straight on top of the hoard? Was there any iron on the target? Or? There was a couple of bits of lead, but they were deep. They were, I'd say, 10 inches. First two bits of lead come up, broken. So, remove one, check, another bit of lead in there. Uh, check the hole once more before I filled it back in and still a signal and put my knife in, turn it over and out pop my first lot of denarii. So I see you've got a few coins there, From the, these are actually from the hoard site are they? Yeah these are um, probably for the first two scoops out of the hole. Um, I, was, I think there's about eight different embers in there. So and obviously there's still a lot more in the hole so. Yeah and they're all, they're all silver denarii I see there and some really really nice ones. The coins are still in the hole. We're waiting for the archaeologists to turn up now and um, hopefully we should get some live digs as the hoard is uncovered. Right, I'm with Bob Croft, a county archaeologist for the Somerset branch. Um, he's been helping excavate this lovely silver denarii Roman hoard. So, Bob, I think the guy's done the right thing here, didn't they, by calling you in? Well, it's, it's been a very good example of when you find something there's always that temptation to get straight in. But if you can hold that back just for a, a, an hour and then stop and understand the context, that's exactly what the archeologists are encouraged. And that is identified in the, in the code for responsible metal detecting. And that's what they did here. And hence I'm here now to help do it archeologically. It's really gone well, hasn't it? It's, everything's gone by the book. It's been a grand job. You know, we've got a lot done. Um, it's been recorded with care. It's taken, takes extra time, several hours extra, in fact. But you can then understand the context. We can see it's part of a, another Roman deposit. And there's a little collection of coins that were probably in, in, a, in a cloth bag or a, a vessel of some sort, but it's not a, it's not a pot. The pot edges have gone if there were any pots there. Basically, it's, it looks like it's been in a container, but it's not a, not a ceramic container. So are you pleased the way the treasure egg's gone with archaeologists and metal detectors so far? It's a challenge every time. It is a challenge every time. But if, if detectorists follow the code, report in so that we know what's been found where, and they get the local finds liaison officer from the Portal Antiquities Scheme to help out, to identify, to record, to understand it means that information is gathered knowledge is not lost and that's what we want to see happen and today is a perfect example isn't it it's just textbook we're, we're doing very well and the finds liaison officers here but we do need to go and have a look in another corner now where they found something else possibly a roman coffin well, well let's have to wait and see let's go and have a look thanks very much